This is the video for Lab 3, Graphing Laboratory Data. I am hoping that the audio holds out a little bit here. I have a lot to say, but I also need to use uh, several sources. So let's talk about this lab. In general, this lab is mostly about learning how to handle your data. So at this point in the semester, you really haven't gotten into those labs that are really complicated, but we are about to. And in a few weeks, you're going to start handling large amounts of information, and you're going to have to classify it. So it kind of helps to have that introduction to Microsoft Excel, and I'm going to teach you how to handle your data in the program in a little bit different of a way. So let's just talk for a second about what a graph should look like. In general, if you were to have a graph, and this is your graph paper where you've got all your, your lines, kind of like that, you don't want to have your data, interesting, you don't want to have your data take up space like this. You've got all this unused space down here. You want to spread your data instead, go down and make a new one, over 80 or more percent of your, your chart space. This is going to enlarge your data so that you can really see the trend. Here we don't know if this is a line or maybe the beginning of a curve or what. By enlarging your data to occupy this space, you get more information. Now, in addition to trying to make your data do this, your y-axis is going to have both the title and the units. So for example, maybe this is um, absorbance. And down here, this would be maybe something like concentration in terms of molarity. You want to make sure you have what you are graphing. And then if there are units that are applicable, you want to have that as well. So this is an M. I'm not at the edge of my screen. Um, you're going to title your graph Y versus X. And so what that means here is this is going to be absorbance, and I would spell it out, um, versus concentration. That is how you title your graph. Now, technically, you should also have data labels wherever you can, and you should have a line of best fit. Now, looking at that, this can be kind of um, overwhelming for students that aren't comfortable with Microsoft Excel. And so what I'm going to do is show you exactly how to handle your data, and I'm going to show you a bunch of shortcuts here. Um, but bear with me for just a second. Before we do that, I just want to quickly review the ID equals NRT. Equals NRT. This is the pressure in atmospheres. This is your volume in liters. This is the moles. This is your gas constant. It's going to have the unit 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Then here we have the temperature. Now remember, for gases, we need our temperature to always be in Kelvin. And so we have to kind of deal with our data um, to get it so that the units here will cancel. So for example, if we give you milliliters, you should know from 111 that 1,000 milliliters is going to give it be the same as one liter. In case you don't remember, one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters mercury, which is kind of important because the barometer in the classroom actually gives you units of um, something mercury, and so you may have to do a conversion if you were to ever um, use the barometer later in the semester. To go between the temperature in Celsius to Kelvin, you just add 273 to your Celsius temperature to get the temperature in Kelvin. And taking into account all of this, we can find or solve for any of these variables. So for example, in the lab today, you're going to be looking for, oops, that's wrong. Uh, not that one. You're going to be looking for 
pressure. You're going to have the volume in milliliters. We're going to give you grams, and you can go between grams and moles using molar mass. Your R is a constant, so that's given, and your temperature is going to be given as well. And so we're going to plug in everything to solve for that P. If we're looking for P, to get P by itself, PV equals NRT, you're just going to divide both sides by volume. And so to solve for our P, it's going to be NRT over V, where all of our units will allow to, for a cancellation to solve for atmospheres. Now let's go over to um, Microsoft Excel for a second. Let's keep that. Um, actually, let's look at this. When you're going through the lab handout this week, I don't think there's a faster way to scroll at the moment. Um, one of the things you're going to be dealing with is this ideal gas law. Now, the great thing is you get these two charts. Now, if you wanted to, turn into the pressure in atmospheres. The thing is, um, in my lectures, I always say chemists are lazy. We're looking for that shortcut always. And so I want to show you how to do that. Now, I'm not going to give you the molar mass of this. I'm just going to use an estimate. You're going to have to get more specific. Use your periodic table, find what the real molar mass is. So let's just look at this for a second. We know. If we wanted to go, let's start on this side, from grams to moles, okay? To solve for grams to moles, I'm going to say that that compound is about 50 grams per mole. Yes. You're going to get the real number because we care about two things in your handout. But if I tell you there's a number of grams of this compound to convert to moles, you're going to put that 50 grams down here, one mole up here. Your grams will cancel and give you moles. So now let's go back to this. Now, when you're trying to convert, you can do this in your calculator probably faster than the way I'm going to show you. But I want you to see this method because it's going to come in so handy later in the semester. Okay? So we know. Oops. According to the slide I just showed you, we know that we're going to divide this 4.85 by the molar mass. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to type in the equation that I want this cell to equal the grams divided by, oops, let's go around. Second, gotta get rid of that G. Come back down here. This cell equals this number. And see how up here it typed in the cell rather than the number itself? That means we're writing an equation here. So we're gonna say that we want it to be equal to that number divided by that molar mass. And then I'm just gonna hit enter. And it gives me the number of moles. Now, again, this is going to be a little faster sometimes in your calculator until you're handling the big data or big lists of data like over here. Now, same thing here. We know that liters is going to be our milliliters divided by 1,000 to make our units cancel. So once you know how to set it up, go up to the equation bar and say equals this number. And technically, you multiply by 1 over 1,000, 1 liter over 1,000 milliliters. So you could do it that way, too. Times 1 liter divided by 1,000 milliliters. And hit enter. Oops. Well, that's because this value has. I was trying to be a good girl and leave my units there, but it messed us up. And again, our number comes out. And it, you can kind of verify what your numbers are. Now, granted, Excel is not going to do your six figs for you unless you tell it to, and I'm not going to get into how to do that at this point. But you know if you have one sig fig, interesting, you would want one sig fig here as well, and so that's okay. Now, let's come over here. The difference between the 
Celsius temperature and the Kelvin temperature is 273. So here I'm going to say, come up here and say equals the temperature in Celsius, which means I'm going to click on my temperature in Celsius cell plus 273. And technically you should probably enter that 0.15 as well, but I'm going to leave it alone for the moment. And I'm going to hit enter. Now at this point you're probably saying, that takes a long time. My calculator is faster. And that's true if you're only doing one calculation. But I want to do all of these. So I'm going to come here until I get to this bottom right corner of my cell. And I'm going to drag down. And it does every single one for me. Did you see how that entered it? Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit undo. And then we're going to do it again. I'm going to come here and drag that corner down. Um, there we go. And so what it's doing is for each time I said, okay, well here add 273, then here it's going to do the same thing. And so it's a really easy way to get your numbers done quickly. Now remember how we said a second ago pressure was going to be equal to nRT over V according to this right here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set this up because this will definitely be faster in Excel than in your calculator. So we're going to say that our pressure is equal to N. So I'm going to come over here to my moles and say this times our R times um, Where's my T? Oh, our T. And if you wanted to, you could put parentheses around all this, but you don't have to. Oops. This is what happens when I use more than one uh, device to enter information. So you could enter your parentheses if you wanted to. It doesn't matter. Divided by our, uh, so this is NRT divided by V, which is my volume in liters. And it gives you your pressure. Now same thing. You're going to come down here and just go like this. Oh, um, So it's going to sometimes give you information. So what it's doing is every time I said to use a cell, it will drag. So I'm going to come back and instead of saying uh, my N I'm going to instead type in uh, G3 is that, ooh, actually, we want it to be um, that 0.097. Our N is 0.097, so 0 0.097. And same thing here, because we don't have a new number of moles down here. It goes to volume. And so same thing here. Um, we're going to type in our R which is 0 0.08206. And then I'm going to come over here and type in my one volume, because that volume is the same each time as well. And that should fix it. Now we can come over here and drag this down. Just like that. Now at this point, you're going to make a graph. Okay, and I just want to kind of point out what that, the problems with your graph might be. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, pull this and this. I'm going to do Celsius um, instead of, oh no, we'll go ahead and do it the right way. We'll show you what it's really going to look like. And I'm going to come up here to Insert. You always want to use the XY scatter. It's just the better way for it. Um, let's see. And it is going to try and do it by row instead of column. That's OK. We can fix that. Oops. Select data. Now. We're going to remove these. Let's switch row to column. Did 
shows up perfect. I don't know why it did that. We're going to try again. I'm probably hitting something with my stylus, honestly. Um, so we're going to right click. Nope. Right click. Select data. And we're just going to say switch from row to column. get rid of this. So see, you kind of want to see um, what you're going to encounter. So insert, XY scatter. Oh, that's because that's highlighted. How did that get highlighted? There we go. Insert. Perfect like that. Now, a couple things you need to watch for. One, you want to make sure that the right thing is on each axis. So if not, you can fix that and we can also adjust. So let's first just deal with the look. You can see automatically we don't have our uh, our axis, axis titles. So we're going to come up here to quick layout, which is right here. And we're going to look for where we have titles. You see kind of how this changes everything? This looks awesome to me, so I'm going to go with that. And now I have room for my title. I have room for this. And I'm going to go ahead and label what I have. So this chart, okay. Um, this chart automatically, what Excel does is it automatically puts whatever is here on the right on your y-axis, okay? So let's just deal with that for a minute. Now you see how my data is all scrunched up up here? That drives me nuts. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our axis, right click, and format axis. Now if you look, our data goes from about 4.3 to 5.3. So I'm going to come over here oops, and say, right click, format X. And I'm going to go over here, and I'm, because it starts at 4.3, I'm going to go ahead and put my axis at 4.2 or 4.25. Uh, well, let's do that. And we'll come down here and put our maximum at, oh, hey, look, it already did it for me. And you see how this, like, extends your data in the, the vertical range? That's fantastic. Now, then I also want it to take up a lot of room here. So I'm going to come down to this axis, click on it. Right click, format axis. Again, it goes from about 273 to 333. So I'm going to put my minimum at like 270. Enter. And, I'm, and it automatically adjusts the other for me. You can fix it more if you want to, but that's pretty good. Then you want to come down here and change all your titles. So here, this is my temperature in Kelvin. So I'm going to click have to actually be here. Where's my temperature? And my units are Kelvin. If you don't have that Kelvin, you will get points off, guys. Um, over here, same thing. This is my pressure in millimeters mercury. Enter. And that's much nicer. 
And then same thing, you're going to always title this Y versus X. So this is um, going to be pressure versus temperature. Now, it, this the, the chart area I selected already gives me this, this value here. Um, now, your R value right here is 1, which means that we gave you data that's virtually perfect. Um, there's a perfect correlation, meaning the data agrees with each other. It, every time temperature goes up, your pressure goes up. It's a direct correlation. You don't have points that are up here or down here away from that line of best fit. Um, when you do data later in the semester, if you get close to 1, that's awesome. Something like 0 0.89, 0 0.92, those are really good values. If you have values like 0.3, it means there's absolutely no correlation between your data and you probably did something really wrong. Now, that's how you adjust your um, chart area. Let's also look really quick at if you actually wanted your temperature here and your pressure here. The easiest way to do that, honestly, there's two ways. Um, let's go ahead and um, I'd say probably for most students, this, I'm going to move this down. I'm going to say it's easiest to just go control C, control V, and then to just kind of go, uh, and I'm not going to deal with the fact that I copied the formula. I'm just going to show you what happens here. Um, like this, insert. XY scatter, and you see like now my temperature values are here, my pressure values are over here. So it automatically fixes that. Um, there's another way to do it, but sometimes it's a little bit more of a pain. Um, but you always want your Y value to be on the right when you're doing your, your tables. Um, so I'm going to get rid of that and come up here for a second. Now for this lab, you are going to be printing graphs to put into your chart. So if you wanted to do that, if you have this value, this chart highlighted, you see how there's buttons there? Uh, let me see if I can get a print preview. You see how this takes up a whole page? That, right there, my friends, is not going to fit in this, uh, in this small area. It's not going to happen. It's even in the horizontal, it's even in the, ver, uh, the landscape format here. So that's not going to work. So what you need to do is come, go back, unselect it. And then you can either copy it to like a Word document or something just to kind of make sure it's going to be the right size. Or when you go, you're going to see the print preview. Do you see how much smaller this is? That's probably going to be better. Um, in fact, if you want to make it kind of nice and neat, Let's go to view and zoom out just so you can kind of see what's going on. Um, and view, oh, you see how I've got my page layouts are already visible. I'm going to move this over here and put it on the second page like that. Come back up here and check my print preview. Print on my second page. This is kind of by itself. It's going to give you a nice chart to cut out and tape, not staple, tape into um, your lab handout. So um, kind of keep that in mind as you're going through this. Now, the last thing I kind of want to show you is during this lab, you're going to be dealing with things like the natural log. You can still use um, Excel for that. So here, come up here and say equals. Um, OK. Up here, you're gonna not, you're not gonna see it because I've got it cut off. But this says sum or functions. So this is gonna equal. I'm gonna click this button. I'm gonna say more functions so you can kind of see. And I'm gonna scroll down to ln. I'm sure there's a faster way to do this, but you know. This is what you're going to see. This is what I'm going to do, too. How 
Aha, there it is. Natural log. Okay. Of, and it's going to ask you for a number. I'm just going to come over here and click this. Now, I don't remember if your lab asks you for millimeters of mercury or, or uh, the natural log of it in atmospheres. Actually, it does. It says, um, it says, um, in millimeters of mercury, so that's okay. Hit enter, and it does it for you. Same thing, you can click on this and drag down, and you get your numbers right away. And so that's going to really allow for you to, um, get your data a lot quicker in later labs, okay? So just, if you need more help, please let your instructors know. Um, but you can rewatch this video as many times as you want to see how those uh, equations are entered. I hope this helps you guys prepare um, for it. The only other thing um, you may need to talk about is the, if you haven't talked about it in a class, is the clausius clapeyon equation. Um, but here, when you do that, actually, let's just go here. It's going to be virtually the same, guys. The only difference is it looks a little bit more complicated. Here it is. Here, your y is going to be the natural log of P, and your x is going to be 1 over temperature in Kelvin. Um, so just, you know, when you're graphing that, make sure you have 1 over temperature and not temperature. Make sure you've already taken the natural log of that pressure, and you should be good to go. I hope this helps.